Hi, this is Miss Rockmine. How you guys doing? I'm good. So I've been, you know, chatting on Facebook. A post I put up um, with about Nia Long and her ex. She's going to be getting 30, 32 five in child support a month. They make a bunch of money. Um, but that's not what this video is about. I noticed that when the topic of shared parenting or child support comes up, that nobody ever brings up what Barack Obama did during his presidency um, to reform the child support guidelines and the share parenting guidelines or visitation, if you will. Um, now they'll bring up when he made this speech back on Father's Day in like 2007. You'll see when he talks about fatherlessness and, you know, the damage that fatherlessness causes children with the suicide and, you know, all the behavioral, criminal, those things, those talking points that always come up when they reference, and I say they, um, I, when they, <laughs> when they talk about fatherlessness in the black community, they um all, they reference Barack Obama. They reference Tupac Shakur. They reference people that we in the black community look up to. So they always have this one quote and they talk about these uh, negative statistics, but they don't bring up that when Barack Obama was in office, he passed uh, a bill. I don't, I don't want to say it's a, it's a bill because I don't look at child support, anything to do with child support as bills. There are guidelines. But when he was in office, he passed a guideline that says if a parent is incarcerated for 180 days or more, then they qualify to have their child support lowered all the way to zero. And that is so they don't accumulate debt while they're locked up because when they get out of jail or prison, it's one and the same to me, um, they can't possibly pay all that debt back. And we know that, he knew that, everybody knows that. It's just a bunch of debt. Nine times out of 10 is owed to the state. And nine times out of 10, it'll never be paid. So that's one thing, not only do they not credit him for passing that or uh, implementing that guideline, they don't even tell people about it. Most states don't even tell the parents when they do uh, get incarcerated or go away that this is an option. Mississippi just last year passed that law. They just made it, uh, they just implemented that law on their books just last year. And this happened back when President Obama was president. That's how long ago that was. So I haven't looked to see how many states have incorporated that guideline into their, uh, their laws. So there's we don't even know, they don't even know how many parents are in prison right now with child support uh, orders that have debt accumulating right now as we speak. So I don't know. I know personally that I, when I was working on cases myself, um, I worked on the case in the arrears were overcalculated. They do that all the time. But um, after I did the audit and everything like that, they had overcharged this father $35,000. That was immediately wiped out. So I always encourage parents, 
especially if you have a loved one that's incarcerated, but even if you don't, always get an itemized statement and audit, audit your own arrears um, calculations that often are wrong and you just just do it just because um, a lot of times that the numbers won't add up. The second thing that Barack Obama did when he was in office in relation to the family court child support uh, share parenting uh, industry is in his 2014 budget uh, sex trafficking, um, I don't have the name of it right here and I'm on my tablet. So, but, um, in that budget, he had a proposal and I had it wrong years ago. Um, I thought it had already went through and somebody on Twitter corrected me, but, and I had went all around, oh, this is, oh, this is past. This is what's going on. And I had to stand down because I was wrong. It was a proposal that every new child support order that was processed had to have a shared parenting or a parenting plan attached to that so that fathers had access to their children. What is going on right now with a lot of these organizations, a lot of these fathers, what they are going state to state saying that they're fighting for, which is shared parenting. Barack Obama in the 2014 budget had that very, very provision, that very argument, or I, I don't know what word I want to use, but that what they're trying to get past, that was there. And Senator Hatch, Senator Lee, and it's one more, I want to say Ram, not Ram Paul, his son, Senator Paul. I'm going to go back and look. I wrote about this. They blocked it and they fought it so hard. And it's there. The provision is there, but it's not a mandate. It's up to the states. It's a, a goal that they have. So... It's not there. It could have been a mandate, but the Republicans blocked it. And I am not on, I'm not a party person. I'm a policy person. I want what's best for the people. So it's not where I'm attacking Republicans and I'm for Democrats. Or I think that's nonsense because each party somebody might present something that is beneficial to for the good of the people and somebody some party might present a bill that's trash it's you know i don't i say that to say it's not that i'm trying to dog republicans and lift up president obama he can't run again i'm just pointing pointing out that when you see these groups that are gung-ho for shared parenting and want to bring up little bits and pieces of what Democrats have done and what Republicans have not and who didn't do what and what, things have been presented and things have happened that could have happened a lot sooner years ago but the people in charge that have the power block the shit so if we are to believe that all of a sudden because certain people are going to certain places and taking pictures with whoever that these bills are all of a sudden going to be passed then we're delusional. You have to acknowledge what has already taken place if you want to move forward. So if you know 
that there was a shared parenting bill that or a shared parenting provision that's there in the child support guidelines that says that there's a goal that they're trying to meet, then you have a starting point. And that's what you want to go by. And if you want to talk about Title Four D and shared parenting, then the first thing really that you should know is the two can they don't go together unless you go to the access and visitation part of the of that program. See, and if you want to talk about it, you have to talk about what has already been what has already been accomplished. And the only president that has touched child support or shared parenting in any way after what Clinton did, along with a bipartisan Congress, um, is President Obama. Now, when Trump came in, he left what Obama did alone as far as the uh, prison, the 180 days, and what he did with the uh, the the goal, you know, with the um, the part with the child support bill, and they want a goal of a parenting plan. He didn't touch anything, but he didn't do anything else. And then the last thing. With the DOJ, the Justice Department letter, you guys know about the DOJ letter that was issued in 2016. Well, that letter was issued as a result of the Mike Brown killing in Ferguson, Missouri. What happened after he was killed by the cop, I think his last name was Wilson, Hold, hold on one sec. Bro. Bro. Yo. Can you turn that down, please? Oh, you hear your thing? Yeah, yeah, please. Or or can you come shut my door? It's cool. I, I'm using it. Okay, thank you. So, uh, when, after Mike Brown was killed, the DOJ, the Department of Justice, went down there and investigated. What they found... And this was under President Obama's administration. And Loretta Lynch was the attorney general. What they found was that black people in Missouri over there in Ferguson and, and around were being pulled over excessively for no reason. They were being ticketed. They were being jailed. They were being held in debtor prisons. They were... Um, having traffic ticket just they were they were wilding over there so the doj issued this letter and pointed out all these unconstitutional uh dealings they were doing down there and they had a, a letter that told them what they were doing what they could not do what they needed to stop what violations were going on well that letter mentioned child support and debtor prisons in Turner versus Rogers, which was a Supreme Court, United States Supreme Court decision, which pointed out that a father or a parent, excuse me, a parent cannot be held in contempt of court if they do not have the means or the ability to pay. You have to willfully fail to pay child support, which means you have to willfully violate that child support order you have the money but you refuse to pay you willfully say you're not going to pay it then you can be held in contempt of court so they included that in that doj letter along with a lot of other stuff it was a groundbreaking letter so i made a video about it wrote about it like it was just all of that well Obama leaves office, Trump comes in office, Jeff Sessions becomes the attorney general, and he rescinds the letter. 
when I tell you my video disappeared off the internet, um, it was it was crazy. But I'm not, I'm not going to go into all that. But he rescinds the letter. But the information on that letter was still, I mean, it's still valid. It still pointed out the violations, all that good stuff. And then nobody heard anything. Everything went business as usual. People still got locked up. All that good stuff. Well, just here last week. Okay, first let me say in April of last year, under the Biden administration, DOJ, I think Barr is the AG. I'm not 100% sure because I don't, I post about child support, but I don't really be on it like that. But um, I think it's Attorney General Barr, but they reissued another DOJ letter. If you don't have it, just Google it, DOJ colleague letter or something like that. If you send me, if you, if you can't find it, Send me an email and I'll send you a copy. Uh, CS Hustle the number one at gmail.com. And I'll, I'll, or you can DM me on Facebook. So just last week, this past week in Missouri, the people that sued over all of those constitutional violations that the ticketing, the debtor prisons, all those things that they were doing that the DOJ found out they were doing, they won their lawsuit. So they were actually doing what they claimed. It's a win, but it's bittersweet because I'm sure they're still doing it. And we know they're doing it all across the nation because my good friend, uh, Darius McCrary was just arrested in a debtor prison for child support arrested in California, extradited to Michigan. I'm sure you guys seen it all in the the uh, media, social media. He was all over. They say it's he was trending. And it was just really horrible because his son was snatched from him after he had had him up until he was six, from a baby to six. And then he ended up having to, he owes Michigan, like a hundred grand. It's, it's, it's crazy. No ability to pay, hearing, none of the things that were outlined in Turner versus Rogers, and again in the Department of Justice letter, and again in a Department of Justice letter that was issued the first time under President Obama. Something that, again, is not talked about as much as it should be talked about. And I'm a firm believer that the reason why it's not talked about is because all these things happen under President Obama. And that's what happens when you put party over policy. There's so many accomplishments and so we could be so, so much further in the reform aspect of this if people put party aside. Because all three things that I just talked about are huge. But if the people will, if they ignore the accomplishments because of who made the accomplishments, then you, it's like nothing happened. But there's always agendas. There's always agendas. So if you don't have an agenda except for, you know, fixing it or if you want to defund it, abolish it, if you want it gone, then that's your agenda. But if your agenda is to prolong it because you get money, that's how you make your money, then it makes perfect sense. But I did want to just come on, make a video, and say that there has been a president that actually has tried to fix and has done some things to fix a broken system as much as he could. And that's President Obama. 
Trump didn't, President Trump didn't undo anything that President Obama did. Whoever comes in next, I don't know because there's so many lies, um, misconceptions. You don't even know what's going on. And I'm just saying that because you, you you don't know what's going on. Who's telling the truth? Who you don't even know what information is valid at this point because everybody has, in my opinion, a hidden agenda. But it really is not that hidden. All you have to do is just scratch the surface a little bit. People really tell you who they are. It's just up to you to either recognize it and decide, you know. You rolling with it or you not, or you're not. So that's it for me. Um, yeah. All right. Till the next time. Y'all stay up.